ஹலோ கைஸ் லெட்ஸ் பர்ஃபார்ம் அ ஸ்ட்ரக்சுரல் அனாலிசிஸ் இன் ஆன்சிஸ் ஒர்க் பெஞ்ச் லெட்ஸ் டேக் அ ஷாஃப்ட் வித் அ கியர் அண்ட் த ஷாஃப்ட் இஸ் மோண்டட் ஓவர் டூ பேரிங்ஸ் ஆன் தி ஒன் ஆன் தி லெஃப்ட் ஹேண்ட் சைட் அண்ட் அதர் ஆன் தி லைட் ரைட் ஹேண்ட் சைட் அண்ட் தெர் இஸ் அ பவர் சப்ளை ஆன் தி லெஃப்ட் ஹேண்ட் சைட் த்ரூ சம் மோட்டார் ஆர் சம் திங் ஸோ தட் வில் எக்ஸட் அ டார்க் ஓவர் தேட் ஸோ வி ஹாவ் டு கிவ் அ டார்க் கியர் அண்ட் தென் த கியர் வில் பி மெஷிங் வித் ஒன் அதர் கியர் அண்ட் தேர் வில் பி லைன் காண்டாக்ட் பிட்வீன் தோஸ் டூ கியர்ஸ் in order to consider that meshing we need to fix this line and we should also give the bearing supports on these surfaces and then we need to give the torque over here and the results what we are expecting is the deformation as well as the stress here we can see the results of the deformation as we have fixed that portion that a deformation there is very less and you can see a maximum deformation here you can also see the magnitude of the deformation and then the stress is also an important result that we need let's move on to the simulation open anxious workbench if you don't have anxious software go to the anxious website and there will be an option for downloading free version of anxious for students once the anxious workbench is open drag the static structural system inside the space there will be a material called structural steel let's leave that material as it is and move on to the geometry and right click the geometry and import the gear that we have already designed then again right click and edit the gear by using design modeler or space claim i am preferring space claim space claim allows you to edit the existing geometry that we are importing from other softwares okay now the model has been successfully imported into the space claim now we can start editing that actually the hole here is uh, really big so i need to reduce the hole diameter so go to the design switch to the section mode and select this front surface click the circle and change the diameter to 10 mm okay now the diameter has been reduced i need to mirror that because i cannot create the shaft on both the sides that's time consuming so for that i am reducing the thickness of this gear so again i am going to the section mode and selecting a side plane and now i'm clicking this line and changing its width to 5 mm and then i'm going to 3d mode so now the gear size has been changed so i need to have a shaft here click on fill and select this circular edge and click the complete now a surface has been created here now we can pull this surface to create a solid click the surface and pull that along this direction you can give the dimension whatever you need i am giving 60 mm then i need to have a smaller cross section having that bearing i'm clicking that surface going to sketch mode i am creating a smaller circle here and marking its diameter as 9 mm ending the sketch and again i'm pulling that surface for a distance of 5 mm then i'm creating a support for that bearing i'm doing the same thing again sketching there creating a circle of 10 mm diameter ending the sketch and then i am pulling that since i need both these cross sections i am selecting both these cross section by holding the control button then i'm pulling that surface to a distance of 5 mm now i got the thing what i need then i need to mirror this in order to have that same geometry in both the sides click the mirror and select the mirror plane and select the body to be mirrored 
now we have mirrored that surface uh, mirrored the body click the home to return to the isometric position since we have mirrored this object there will be a line in all these things if you don't want to see that line you can go to the repair and merge faces and you can merge select the face whatever you need to merge and then click the tick button now we can see it has been converted into a single face and for our analysis purpose we need to have an edge over here because the gear will be meshing with another gear a line contact will be established between these two gears so i need to have a line here for that go to design go to split and click the split click the face that to be splitted and select the type of splitting i am selecting the perpendicular cut point and i am selecting a point somewhere here so uh, we need to do the calculation for providing the exact point that to be uh, fitted because that is an instantaneous point that will be changing over the time and changing over the position of the gears and just for the demonstration i am uh, creating a line somewhere here and now the edge has been created now we have splitted this faces into two halves so we can give a boundary on this edge so now almost the uh, modeling part is over you can close this space claim and save the workbench file wherever you want then double click the model there we need to create the mesh once the geometry is successfully imported in the mesh section you can click the mesh you can simply right click and click generate mesh it will automatically generate a mesh you can see uh, this is 100 mm so our geometry will be more than 100 mm so we can have a mesh size at least a 5 mm i am going to the element size and changing that to 5 mm so let's see how the mesh is being generated i am updating the mesh for 5 mm still it seems to be a very coarse mesh so i am refining that mesh by having an element size of 2 mm again i am updating that so it sounds good now it's almost a good mesh but however if you want to do a perfect analysis we need to have some local controls wherever we expect the gradient to be high now let's go on to the uh, boundary conditions part here we are going to give the torque so for that right click the st static structural and inset and give a moment actually the magnitude of this moment or the torque should be calculated based on the uh, formula 2 pi and t by 60 as we know provided at the power we have to calculate the torque just for a demonstration purpose i am giving an arbitrary value we can also change that unit here now we have given a moment or torque in counter clockwise direction if it is in counter clockwise direction the gear will also tend to rotate in counter clockwise direction so if you want to change the direction you can click that and use this arrows to change the direction and if you click apply you can see now it has been changed to clockwise direction so when the shaft is rotating in clockwise direction the gear will also rotate in clockwise direction and here we can give a support that's a fixed support click that edge and insert and give fixed support this is the line on which the gear is meshing over another gear so just i am giving that as a fixed support and we need to have a bearing support over here and here so we have to select those two faces click this face and hold the control button and click another face and you can right click and insert a cylindrical support so in cylindrical support you can control three different kinds of motions so here the radial motions that should be fixed because since the bearing is fixed over there it cannot move in this radial direction and also the axial direction can also be fixed because it cannot move in this axial direction because it, it may be uh, have a restriction because of the surfaces and the tangential direction is the rotation rotational direction of that so that can be free so that should be free if the shaft is rotating okay now we have provided three different boundary condition one is a torque or moment on the shaft end and another end is set to be free then the next boundary is a fixed support that is a meshing line of this gear over another gear and we have cylindrical support that is the support that is provided by the bearings so here we have only the tangential component that is the shaft is free to rotate but cannot move in other axis and now the solution what we need is the deformation 
and also the stress that is the one mrs equivalent stress and once you set up all those things you can solve the problem it may take some time to solve the problem so please be patient okay now the simulation is successfully performed and we have the results and this is the total deformation so if you want to see this result without this mesh you can go to the result section and click this edges and click no wireframe the maximum stress is observed as 1.6 into 10 to the power of 7 pascals so that should be checked with the material properties so if a material can withstand this stress the design is safe we can also have the factor of safety then we have to see the deformation so as we have defined this teeth as the machine teeth and we have fixed the teeth so the deformation there is very minimum that that is zero and then on the other side the deformation is maximum and you can see the whole shaft is bent that is because of the force that is applied on that but actually it is not bent that much it is an exaggerated picture you can scale that this is actually an exaggerated scale so you can see that in the true scale this is the actual deformation now we can see the shaft is not bent to that much let's change the units to mm so now we can see the deformation is very small that is 0.008 mm this is not actually bent that much but in order to have a visualization better visualization of the results there is an option to display that in an exaggerated way and if you want to have the exact value of result on any point you can use this probe and you can click here and you can see the value there this is the deformation there you can use this probe to measure the stress on any particular portion there is also an option to show the minimum and maximum values of that here the deformation is maximum so if you click the probe maximum so the maximum deformation is acquiring at this point that's a value of 0.008 mm and you can also see the minimum deformation that is zero here because we have fixed that portion similarly you can see that for equivalent stress the maximum stress is observed here that is the value of 16 megapascals and the minimum stress is uh, 7 into 10 to the power of minus 5 megapascals that is observed somewhere here here the stress is very minimum if you want to present this result as an image save that as a picture for that you have to go to images image to file if you want to have a better resolution check this current graphic display and go to enhanced or high resolution and you can save that that simply as image only or you can also save that with this with this legends and you can have a graphic background like this or we can also have a white background so now i am preferring white background and i'm saving on desktop this is the result of stress then in the similar way i am saving the result of deformation here images image to file enhanced resolution image and legend image and legend white and this is deformation now we can see the result plots in the location where we have saved that this is the stress plot and also the deformation here thanks for watching if you have any doubts or clarifications please feel free to contact and if you like this tutorial please don't forget to subscribe our channel medtech thank you